There you go. It is now. So I'd like to point out some observations about the Luta way of pronouncing uh, some words uh, which differ from the way the same words are pronounced in the other islands of the Marianas. And one of the distinct features of the Luta accent is whereas in some words the other islands will say ah, the Luta accent says ah. And so uh, these words would be pronounced pagu, tatatsu, magagu, finanagui, classy, americano, gracia, animas, pilato, cadgamo. So in the Chamorro spoken elsewhere, to differentiate the two sounds ah and a, a recent development in orthography is to place an open circle above a's with the ah sound. For example, in the word magogu, in the Chamorro spoken on the other islands, there are two distinct sounds, even though there are two a's here. This one has the a ah sound, this one has the ah sound, magagu. So on the other islands, one might want to put an open circle over the ah sounding a, so that one knows very clearly that it's magagu. Same thing with pagu, tha, so that remains the same, but Fa to sun fina no gui glossy americano gracia animas piloto cat so a uh, leave it alone cat gomu but in luta in rota it would be pagu fatatsun Magagu, Finanagui, Classy, Americano, Gracia, Animas, Pilato, and Cagamo. However, what's interesting is that <clears throat> in some words, very few words, but you can hear them at times, is it's the opposite, where the uh, Chamorros in the other islands would say ah, the Chamorros in Luta will say ah. For example, in uh, Guam, Saipan, Tinian, one would say gina an i ta ta because the I in front of this A in ta ta will make the ah an ah. But I've heard it said in Luta. Ginan i tata. In the other islands of the Marianas, for the word left, we would say akagui. So both a's being the a sound, akagui. But in Luta, I've heard akagui. And for right, the right hand, the other islands will say agapa. But in Luta, I have heard agapa. So again, there are exceptions going in both directions. Another feature of the Luta accent <clears throat> is the softening of the consonants. Whereas in the other islands, we will oftentimes stress consonants and stay a little longer on them, prolonging them as it were. In Luta, they will soften it and it will not linger on that consonant sound. For example, the word donni in Luta is more pronounced donni. Odda, you can hear how we stay on that D sound, making it two Ds really. Odda, odda. 
in luta will be softer. It'll be oda. Godi in luta is godi. Golai everywhere else in luta is golai. Soda in luta will be pronounced soda. And there are some words where both the softening of the consonant and the use of the a ah rather than the a ah sound are seen in one word. For example, in the other islands, we will say kadu, whereas in luta it's kadu. The, our word for money, everywhere else we say salopi. So there's a double p and it's an a, ah, whereas in luta the word for cash, for money is salapi. Salapi. So both are a, ah, and they don't stretch the p, they don't stay there. It's a very soft p. Salapi. And perhaps the last feature of the luta accent <clears throat> is the omission of the h sound before a, another consonant. So, for example, the word spoken or pronounced everywhere else as mama lao. You have that mama. The H is very clearly um, spoken, sounded, mama lao. In luta, the H is eliminated and it becomes mama lao. And even the A ah becomes an A, ah, mama lao. So, zo, to encourage, to urge somebody, so, zo, in luta, the H is eliminated and it becomes so, zo. And tago, lo, Something high, someone high, tagalo, in luta loses the H and both A's become A and it becomes tagalo, tagalo, high. We also know very well that the luta accent has the sing song um, element to it, characteristic, and that melodious sing song type uh, accent we call the tonada which is a Spanish borrowed word meaning tune or melody and Chamorros also use it to describe an accent. So my theory is that the luta accent which has that sing-song quality to it is perhaps the original sound of all Chamorros. And the reason why I say that is because Rota, although did have regular contact with Guam, uh, students from Luta were sent to the Colegio de San Juan de Letran in Agaña and went back to Luta. Uh, Chamorros from Guam did go over to Luta, uh, sometimes to settle temporarily as officials and teachers, sometimes permanently. Uh, so therefore there was contact between the two um, Luta did have less um, uh, numerous outside uh, numbers coming in to settle and perhaps less outside influence on their speech. The same can be said definitely for the villages in the extreme south, Umatak, Malesu, and in Alahan, and perhaps at one time Pago as well, but that village became extinct in the influenza or the, the smallpox epidemic in 1856. Hagat may have also had that original element but because it's closer to Hagatnya and more Aganya people came down and mixed with the Hagat people perhaps that was lost. Sumai was settled by people from Hagatnya. <clears throat> Actually the arrow should be this way. Hagatnya people moving and establishing the village of Sumai the Chamorro villages surrounding Hagatnya, uh, Apudguan, Mongmong, Sinahanya, um, Asan, Tepungan, which is now Pidi, uh, Aniguac, they were close to Hagatnya and so therefore quite influenced by Hagatnya. What happened in Hagatnya, of course, is that you had two barrios. San Ignacio were the so-called Spaniards, which included Mexican, South Americans, uh, and others who were married into those families, and the Filipinos, 
mainly from the Pampanga region. So Aganya became, as one might say, a foreign colony, but the Spaniards, Mexicans, Latin Americans, etc., and the Fil Filipinos, mainly Pampanga, mixed with Chamorros, their Chamorro wives. And their children were all considered uh, mestizos, but the Chamorro language, of course, now heavily influenced by Spanish, but my feeling is not only in terms of vocabulary, but also the original Chamorro accent was lost. But it remained strong in the South, such that prior to the war, many people said that even in Maleso and in Alahan, especially the families that are truly rooted in these villages, because some Aganya people eventually moved to these villages. But those who were originally from these villages retained that strong tonada, to the extent that even in Omata today, you can hear that sing-song or tonada characteristic of the Chamorro accent, which they share. Imagine this, people in Omata share that same accent <clears throat> with the Chamorros of Luta, who still by and large retain that tonada. It's very weak now, very few families in Humatak have that accent. It's almost impossible or very difficult to find people in Maleso and Alahan today who have the tonada, but they still exist. So, for, the exa for example, the other day, someone from Humatak said to me, Okay, so someone from Humatak said that to me. And in Luta, if I ask somebody to say those exact words, they would have the exact same intonation, except that Pogu will become Pagu. Pali will remain the same, and the intonation will be exactly the same. In Luta, they would say to me, Sina ha pagu pali. So it's that same intonation. So we call it the tonada. It's my theory that this is the original way Chamorros, all Chamorros sounded. It was retained in Luta because of the uh, less foreign influence over their speech. Same thing in the south, except that over time, uh, in Guam, uh, this accent was weakened. It's still found today a little bit in a few families in Omaktak. But in Hagatnya, with all of this influence from the outside, the accent was lost. And as Hagatnya peopled the village of Sumai, went down into Agat, and then eventually to Malesu and in Alahan, and less strongly in Omaktak, the Tanada was weakened over time.